So far, we have seen different libraries and their usages within Spring Boot. We saw how Spring has wrapped up all the existing libraries so that it can be integrated or plugged into the existing Spring ecosystem. So you can develop Spring native applications much easily with less learning curve. In this video, I'm going to use Drop Wizard and then see how Drop Wizard is different from Spring Boot. There are different frameworks like Micronaut and Quarkus which does something similar. However, I never showed you how we can leverage Drop Wizard to create microservices. In this video, I'm going to try creating a Drop Wizard application. I'll just try a simple hello world, see how we can leverage some of the Drop Wizard native features. For example, Drop Wizard doesn't support dependency injection by default. Unlike the other frameworks which we have seen earlier, Drop Wizard doesn't support dependency injection by default. Of course, you can include Spring BI or other frameworks for using the dependency injection within Drop Wizard. So let's see what does that mean to the framework itself. Let's get started. As you can see, this is the Drop Wizard's um, documentation, which is dropwizard.io. The documentation is pretty neat. There are different user guides with respect to the libraries. Similar to how we had uh, different dependencies within Spring Boot, there are different libraries within Drop Wizard, which we can plug in and then integrate and then use the feature which we need. So I'm going to create a new project. There is no start.spring.io kind of a template using which we can create the project. However, there is a Maven uh, artifact generator using which we can create the project. So I'm going to use the Maven uh, arch type generator for it. So I'll be uh, using the arch type generate. I'm going to provide the arch type group ID as uh, IO drop wizard arch types. That's where the drop wizard has its own arch type where we can create a simple project. I'm going to provide the artifact um, ID as this Java simple, which will create simple Java project with the default um, class files. The artifact ID is drop wizard example. The version of my uh, application is 1.0 snapshot, so I will keep the same. Also, the package which I want to have is com tech primers. I don't want to have project. And also, the name of the project, I'm just going to call this as drop wizard. Maybe drop wizard hyphen example. So I'll just name this as drop wizard hyphen example. This is going to create a new uh, Maven project which is going to be called as drop wizard hyphen example and you can see that uh, there is a new folder which got created which is this so i'm going to go to that particular directory and let me open this in intellij so the project got opened in intellij it was very quick uh, you can see that there is a default readme xml which says how to clean the project how to run the project unlike spring boot where we just run java hyphen jar here we have to pass the server and also the configuration file so we will have to pass the config.yaml in order to start the server. This is similar to our uh, spring config.yaml which we provide. Also by default there is a health check endpoint which is running in a different port. If you see here the default application runs in 8080 and the health check run point uh, can be accessed from a different port using the 8081 slash health check endpoint. So by default uh, we are getting it out of the box. So let me go to the folder structure. You can see that um, it has created multiple files. Uh, I think since I had put drop uh, wizard hyphen example, it has created a name like this. I think I did a mistake. I should rename this file. Done. So I fixed the class names um, which got created. So since I added a hyphen, I think it just created a hyphen in the class name which Java doesn't support. So we have a drop wizard example application. Now if you compare this with Spring Boot, uh, in Spring Boot we have a similar kind of a application class which has the public static ward main and then we call the run method. So same way we do that here. The only difference is there is no add Spring Boot application annotation. So in Spring Boot, we use a lot of annotation based injection uh, and stuff like that. Here, if you see uh, the drop wizard example application is extending the application. Now this run method will be present in the application class. So see here, this is the application class. Within the run method, we are going to add the default commands, initialize the server, register different artifacts. So the metrics or the health checks which we saw, these are getting registered as a part of the bootstrapping of the application and then it's doing all the other default commands checking and stuff like that which is similar to spring boot so there is no difference um, with respect to starting up of the server uh, in addition to that if you look at it by default we have to provide a configuration 
um, generic. So basically, we have to inject the configuration type into the application so that it can uh, leverage um, these three methods. So I have to override these three methods. Get name is fine. I'm just overriding the class or the application name. Uh, there is an initial there is an initialize method using which I can initialize some um, uh, startup based registrations i can do that in this particular bit i'm not going to do any uh, initializations um, here right now but as a part of the run we have to do the implementation so in spring boot what we generally do when we create a rest controller uh, we don't have to add it into any different place right however here in drop wizard you will have to provide the instance and register that instance into the environment which we have here so let me show that by an example uh, i want to create a new controller so controllers are called resources here so I'll create a new uh, resource called hello world. So I'll just say hello world resource. Uh, here I'm not going to annotate it with anything, but here I'm not going to annotate it with at whatever, but I can leverage the web service specification. So I'm going to use the at path, which will define the path of the URL. For example, I'm going to say this is hello, right? So somebody says hello, then obviously this particular resource will be hit. In Spring Boot, we generally use request mapping and stuff like that. Here, we are using the JAXRS specification. So I will just use add path. So same way, I can use the get and the post method. So I'll just say get method. Since I want to return a hello world, I'll just return the uh, hello world here. Let me return hello world. So I can also have uh, default arguments. If you see in this particular uh, annotation, you can see different ways in which you can add um, the producers and consumers and stuff like that so right now i have only the get endpoint and in order to inject this into the um, framework itself right we will have to do that in the um, application here so when we start up the application we need to register this so there is something called environment in the environment there is something called register right i mean there is a jersey so obviously jersey is the server which we are using here so similar to tomcat we are using jersey here so inside jersey we are going to register our uh, resource so i have to do a new resource since drop doesn't use um, dependency injection i cannot do an auto wire and then inject it here so i will have to do a new hello world resource so i'll have to create an instance of the resource whatever i have created and then i have to register this particular resource here that's it so this is how i create a hello world application let me start this particular class here i have to provide the uh, program arguments as server and you can notice that uh, this application started um, the server in like 1.3 milliseconds basically it's like i think 1000 milliseconds which is 1.3 seconds generally spring boot application takes five to six seconds uh, in my machine which is a mac but um, drop is that has just taken one 1.3 seconds right which is much faster comparatively and also if you notice here uh, drop wizard says that by default there is no health check registered so it's asking me to register the health checks so uh, initially we saw that there can be um, health checks which are there mentioned in the readme but how do i register these health checks right so i will have to register them in the same environment so i can just say environment dot health check so there is something on health check so i can just use the environment dot health checks and I can register my health checks instance. So, for example, if I want to inject a new health check um, endpoint, right? So, I can do that. Um, meanwhile, uh, let's go to the browser and then hit the hello world endpoint and then let's come back and then see what's happening. Uh, let me do a local host 8080 slash hello. So, this is returning hello world. So, this is what we added. So, which is working fine. So, we know that the application is working. Now to register the health check endpoints. Now let's say I want to add a new health check endpoint called as, uh, for example, uh, tech primers itself, right? So I want to provide a name in the health check, uh, denoting that this is coming from tech primers. Also, I want to create a new um, health check class, right? So I can directly do a new health check class, and I can implement this particular method, which is the check method here, and I can return a object of type result. So if I go into the object result. Uh, you see that it, it has something called healthy, you can set it as true or false and stuff like that. So let's um, go back to the class here. So I'm just going to say here that result.healthy. So I'm just returning um, a healthy endpoint result, just that I'm adding something called as tech primers here. That's it. Now let me restart this particular server. 
So the server is started now. I don't see any error message saying that um, the health check endpoint is not registered. Let me go to the browser and then if you remember, we had to go to 8081 and then health check, right? To check the health check endpoint. So if you see here, uh, I do have something called tech climbers which got added and I have added a healthy um, here, right? Now for fun sake, let's say if I want to add unhealthy, I can do that. Right, and I also can throw some exception and stuff like that. I can say not ready. Right, so let me restart this guy, and we should be able to refresh this and then see that uh, it says not ready. Right, so we can control the uh, health values, whatever we are returning from the health check endpoint. Or in fact, like if let's say you think this is too much, you can create your own uh, resource and then inject that like a health endpoint, right? So obviously you can uh, do that as well, but I'm just using the existing health checks um, resource so that I can register my application or my metric, right? I mean, this is like a sub metric within health checks. So I can have database metric, I can have queue based metrics, I have integrations and stuff like that. I can add all those as a part of my health check and then make the application observable. This is how you can register the actuators. Now coming to the folder in itself, if you see there are different um, endpoints here where we can obviously implement um, the features uh, of the application which when we develop it, right now we don't have anything implemented but uh, you do have place where you can implement them. Going to the POM XML, uh, let's open that and see how is it different from Spring Boot, right? So by default if you see here the drop wizard version I'm using is 2.0.0 which I have mentioned while, while creating the project. Uh, we are using the drop wizard dependencies. Let me go into drop wizard dependencies. I can see that there are a bunch of dependencies. Uh, the difference between Spring Boot and Drop Wizard is that Drop Wizard doesn't have any wrapper kind of a thing. So Drop Wizard doesn't have, for example, a wrapper around wrapper, something like a Spring Boot starter, right? In Spring Boot, we have Spring Boot starters specifically for each functionality or the APIs or the libraries which we integrate within Spring Boot. But uh, in Drop Wizard, you can directly use the native libraries and then you can get uh, get them started. Right. For example, Jetty is added by default, Jersey is added, there is something called JDBI, uh, which is a wrapper around JDBC, right? I mean, it's an it's a interface wrapper. So similar way, there are different libraries and they are directly injected and you can directly use them. So you don't have to wait uh, for other library within Dropuzza to get added and stuff like that, right? So you can obviously overwrite different versions and you can integrate different versions within Dropuzza. The other thing which I liked about Proposat is the startup time. The startup time was much faster compared to Spring Boot. Uh, I don't know how um, does it get complicated or how easy is it to scale to a, a bigger sized microservice. But from what I see, Proposat uh, is very helpful when you're creating smaller chunk based microservices with a very lightweight and fast web server. Obviously, Dropbox gets a little bit faster compared to Spring Boot because of the less wrapper based approach which it uh, uses. Because with Spring Boot, there are a lot of wrappers and a lot of things happening in the runtime and during the startup time. But in Dropbox, they do um, have a lot of things which uh, go under the covers, but I don't think it is done to the extent where Spring has a lot of um, wrappers with the native libraries. Of course, you can integrate Spring Framework within Dropwizard and you can still leverage the features of Spring within Dropwizard itself, right? However, uh, I don't think I will do that kind of a thing unless or until I uh, want to desperately use Spring in some shape or form within the Dropwizard project. Now, coming to the dependency injection part, there is no dependency injection. Like I mentioned, uh, if you see, there is no at auto wiring, there is no uh, injections and stuff like that. We are directly creating new classes and injecting them, registering them. Uh, like how we do in a classic uh, Java application, right? So that's the difference between Spring Boot and the Drop Wizard by default. So we don't get dependency injection in the Drop Wizard framework. So you will have to register each and every resource. So if you add a new resource, don't get offended that Drop Wizard did not pick it up. You will have to customly plug them in so that Drop Wizard can identify them during the startup time. So these are my initial impressions of how to create a Drop Wizard project. And I feel it's good. Uh, maybe I think I want to play around uh, with this particular project for much more uh, use cases. Do let me know if you have any use case which you think um, would make sense to implement with the Dropwizard. If you're already using Dropwizard, do let me know in the comment section below. Uh, if you're new to Dropwizard, again, let me know how is it different from Spring Boot. As always, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.